welcome back to Let's Cook That. Today is our first video of 2020. Yes, it's January 1st of 2020. A new decade, new future for everybody. Lots of health, lots of love and prosperity for everyone, you guys. If you guys are new to this channel or it's your first time watching our videos, hit that subscribe button, the little bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. And today I'm giving a special shout out to Melon Money Mindset. If you wanna um, learn more about growing financial or saving money or doing investments, go ahead and check out his channel. We'll leave it down below right here so you guys can check it out and subscribe to his channel as well and show the love you guys. And then let's start today with our video. We're making chile verde, which is um, pork chile verde, okay? So let's get started with those ingredients. Alrighty, so we have two serrano peppers, and then I'm using two of the Anaheim peppers, and I'm adding one of the pasilla, also known as pueblano peppers, or you could leave this one out and just use Anaheim, or the other way around, leave these out and add two of these, which tastes really good. And then we have some tomatillos, and then some cilantro, garlic clove, a piece of onion, cumin, oregano, and of course, we have our pork. I have pork shoulder right here, salt, pepper, some chopped onion, and some more garlic. So let's get started with this recipe. Okay, so to start with this recipe, we need to make our sauce. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is roast the Anaheim peppers and our pasilla, or pueblano pepper, and then our tomatillos and serrano. We're gonna go ahead and put them to get roasted as well. Because when you, when you roast them, it gives it actually a really good flavor. If you do not want to roast this, you could also boil them. But make sure you do roast your Anaheim peppers and your Pueblano pepper. Okay, and if you have your stove that's electrical, you could also roast your Pueblano pepper inside the, the skillet or the, your pan, whatever you're using. Okay, so this is what you want. And then you're going to put it into a bag so we could go ahead and steam it. So it could be easy to peel the skin off. I'm going to grab it. This one's good to go. Okay, so now that your um, chiles are nice and soft, go ahead and peel the skin off and remove the seeds from inside as well and its little stems. So now that our um, chilies are ready, our tomatillos are ready, I did also um, roast the onion and the garlic and our serranos already removed the stem. Let's go ahead and put your tomatillos first into the blender. We're going to throw everything in together, okay? Everything in and then we're going to add. Oh, by the way, when I roasted them, I did put a little bit of pan spray, but that's optional. You don't really have to, okay? So what we're going to do after putting everything into our blender is add our cilantro as well. So wash, make sure everything you wash. And then it'll be half a teaspoon of cumin. Pinch of oregano. It's probably about a half a teaspoon. Okay, let's put it in. Let's put a little extra. Oregano. And cumin gives it a really good flavor to your green um, salsa. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and blend this. No need to add no liquids, no water, because your tomatillos actually release a lot of that liquid. But if you feel it's too thick, then go ahead and add a little tiny bit, just a little bit of water or a little bit of broth of any kind you have, okay? So let's go ahead and blend this. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and add some salt and pepper, black pepper, to our meat, or you could add your favorite seasoning as well. It's okay, no problem. Remember, you could always switch everything up. So let's go ahead and mix this good. Okay, and I already have my pan um, preheated. I put about two tablespoons of oil. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go, we're gonna sear our meat just so it could get nice and brown, okay? And then we'll we will remove it.
Okay, so once your meat is brown, go ahead and remove it. Remember, it does not have to be completely cooked because we are gonna simmer it for a very long time, okay? So let's go ahead and remove it. Whatever you have left from where you seared your meat, we're gonna go ahead and remove some of this oil, leaving it to about one tablespoon, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove some. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the onion, the chopped onion, our two garlics that I had, we're gonna go ahead and mince it, or you could chop it and put it in as well. We're gonna go ahead and saute this for about two minutes. Okay, so once your onion and your garlic is ready, you can smell it, it smells so good. We're gonna go ahead and add our sauce. Oh, there's a piece of cilantro that didn't get well blended. That's okay. Okay, now what we're gonna do is you can either add water or you can use any of the broth that you have. And I do have some chicken broth, store-bought, not my homemade broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and add about two cups or just enough to fill up, fill up the pot so we could cover our meat, okay? Because we're gonna simmer it. And once we simmer it, it will reduce to less. We can use a stock, stock pot if you have a stock pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, you see that was two. That's three. Okay, I'll leave it to three. Three cups. Let's go ahead and mix it. And of course, at this time, we can add salt. Yeah, I need salt. But I'm gonna use the consomme de pollo. So I'm gonna start with one tablespoon. Mix it until we get our, the perfect flavor that you want, okay? Or you can add salt, or you could put both. Actually, if you do caldo de pollo and you do a little bit of salt, it actually gives it a really good flavor doing both. So let's go ahead and try it again. I could use another tablespoon. But remember, that's to taste. All the ingredients and measurements that I'm using for this recipe will be listed in the description box. Once you get the perfect flavor that you want, go ahead and return your meat back to your pot. You're gonna go ahead and put this to low, you guys to low because you're gonna simmer it for about two hours or until your meat is nice and tender. Okay, you guys, so it's been two hours. When I put it to simmer, I did add two bay leaves, which I forgot to mention. I'm sorry for that, but I'll leave it in the description box. As you can see, it did reduce its sauce. So let's go ahead and check this out. As long as your meat is nice and tender, it is done, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this off and serve it. Alrighty, so it smells really delicious because it was simmering for like two hours. You were able to smell it even outside. They were like, man, what smells so good? But this is our final result. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share, you guys. Share with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And leave your comments, you guys. So let's go ahead and try this. You could serve over some white rice, some Mexican rice, whatever you like. You can make it into burritos or tacos. It's very, very good, okay? So let's go ahead and try this. It's very hot. Mmm, it's really soft. Very good, you guys. Simmering the sauce for a long time. You know what's the best part? You could actually do it in a crock pot as well, but you just have to leave it for a little bit longer, maybe like for three hours, you guys. But this is so delicious, you guys, okay? So I hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you next time on Let's Cook That.